I want to show you a picture. This happens to be my uncle. But every person in the military had their picture made. <coughs> every person, and they still do. Not everybody's family is able to afford going to the photographer and having a picture, especially during World War II because we were coming out of the Depression. But I we had two speakers that were living in Highland Park uh, during the during World War II. We got to actually hear about more about World War II and instead of just reading from a textbook. In uh, Europe, the Nazis had conquered one country after another where all the countries of Eastern Europe were prisoners basically and being subjected to all kinds of torture. People were being put in prison camps. They were being um, killed in the prison camps. People, innocent victims, you know, the women and children and some men were put in the ovens to burn them. They were being tortured. So all this was going on in, in Europe. And in the meantime, the one country that the Nazis had not conquered was England, but they were about to. They were flying their planes over and dropping bombs nearly every day. I think that this type of experience is something they won't forget because it gives them a real life connection to World War II, not just reading about it or seeing it in pictures, but to actually talk to someone and hear someone tell them what it was really like to be here during that time period. Well, it was, they were actually really, really were interesting because I've never really heard anything like it before. Something happened. And you all know what it was. Okay, everyone say it together. Pearl Harbor. Harbor. That's right. Who wants to say the date? Everyone say it together. December 7, 1941. Correct. The war started. It was a shock to the people in our country. I was five and a half years old. And so when the word got out that uh, the bomb had been dropped, bombs, many of them, and the strafing of sh shooting people as they're running and fleeing and things on fire, and almost all our ships were sunk. And so we finally heard, and it was in the afternoon, Sunday afternoon, and my dad said, we're going to war. Now, a lot of people went to war immediately. They signed up. The kids, 17, 16, 18, they all went in. And here's a picture of the Lancaster High School 1941 team. And their record, just in football, was 532 wins and six losses. So you got to figure they were a fairly good football team. The whole team together went and joined into the service. How many of you all have brothers who are seniors in high school? All right, you know what would happen? They'd graduate from high school, and the next morning they would go to war. And so it's very engaging for them to be able to um, not only hear about it, but touch and see and talk to someone who really lived during that time period. We all had these in our windows, and you drive down the street, and in maybe every third window, you would have one of these. And the postman knew that way where everybody that had kids or family in the service, they would deliver the mail, and they would stop at those houses first and then deliver the rest of the mail because they knew people were waiting to find out if they'd gotten a letter from their loved ones. I think hearing this firsthand experience really positively impacts their learning by providing them with a real world ex connection to the past. They bring in their artifacts, they bring in ration books, they might bring in pictures from uh, their father who was in the war. Um, they'll bring in um, uniforms, just lots of interesting things that the children sometimes never get to see or feel and touch.